وننتقل الان الى تجربه جديده ويعني هذه التجربه هي رحاله بحد ذاتها هي رحاله وخبره في العمل الخيري والانساني طافت في العديد من الدول وتنقلت في عدد من الاعمال اضافت لخبرتها وستضيف لنا اليوم بالتاكيد الكثير الاستاذه فريال الهناس الاستاذه فريال اكثر من 20 عام في الخبره في العمل مع المنظمات غير الحكوميه الدوليه منها 15 عام في الإدارة العليا وإدارة التنمية وبرامج الاستجابة للطوارئ قبل انضمامها إلى منظمة كونسيرف في تركيا، كما أنها كانت مديرة قطرية لمنظمة هيومن أبيل في العراق وباكستان، ولديها خبرة في العمل في اليمن لصالح منظمة أوكسفام والإغاثة الإسلامية ومنظمة أدرا. نترككم مع الأستاذة فريال مهناس. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, I'm supposed to do this in Arabic. I do speak. Fairly okay Arabic, but I'm just not comfortable to present this in Arabic. So I've asked my previous boss, basically, to do my translation, and he's um, he's going to kind of translate for me. أنا كنت ممثل مقيم للعقاد الإسلامية وهي كانت مديرة برامج الأيتام في اليمن. <تصفيق> آه فيه آه آه ديسكليمر بسيط آه وورنينج بأن ترجمتي من العربية من الإنجليزية العربية أو بالأصح ترجمتي الإنجليزية أسهل من الترجمة من الإنجليزية العربية فخلي بالكم. <تصفيق> um, just before I start I would like to say something Dr. Hani asked me to share the importance of women in the field and also you know uh, a little bit of experience so i'm going to talk about my life journey um and it's so it's not really it's not don't consider this as a show off it's just a humble experience of my life um as a woman what i have been through so this is what i'm going to share with you Dr. Hani وبقدر حاجه للتوضيح بان هذا ليس عمل استعراض الا انه لابد ان يعني اشاركم خبرتي وتجربتي في هذا المجال. Okay. So give you a little bit of background. I am originally Pakistani, born to Pakistani parents, but I, I was born and raised in Yemen. انا من باكستان اصلا ولكن تربيت وتعرفت في اليمن. And um, I went to school for a couple of years and then in in those times there were no English medium schools so I hardly went to school so most of my education is homeschooling. I was not brought up to be a working woman it was just that I was brought up to be a normal housewife like anyone. ولا معد للعمل الميداني انما تم تربيتي كمسؤوله او مرأة منزليه يعني ربت بيت. So at the age of 17 my father passed away and then I just felt I because I was doing homeschooling university online I decided to go and do some teaching uh, in a school in Yemen. قررت ان ادرس في اليمن. نتيجة الخبرات والمهارات التي اكتسبتها عبر الباور سكولينج. And uh, at the age of around 20 I went to the UK. في سن ال 20 ذهبت إلى المملكة المتحدة. Uh, and I was like looking for a job because after teaching I wanted to do something with children. This is what I was sure that I want to work with children. وكنت متأكدة أني أريد أن أعمل مع الأطفال. And um, Most people around me, Pakistanis, the ones I knew from my family, they said, you're not going to get a job here. Why don't you go and work in a factory to do wrapping? That's what most people did at that time. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And they thought I was arrogant, but I decided that, no, I could do a lot more than that. رفضت توصياتهم واعتقد ان هذا نوع من الاستعداء والتكبر مني لكني صريت. But somehow I, I went I got a job in social services to work with special needs children who were actually dying and that opened a lot of things for me. I learned so much so that was my start of my career uh, working in social services. 
بدات عملي في خدمات اجتماعيه مع اطفال ذوي الاحتياجات الخاصه وكانت هذه انطلاقه المسار. More of a nursing environment but it was just an amazing work that I always enjoy and cherish even now. وكان المجال الذي استمتعت به ولا زلت استمتع به حتى اليوم. And then I wanted to do more after a few years. I did some more jobs in the UK for the next coming seven years, but I never enjoyed the development work in the UK. It never made any sense to me, although I did not have the academics behind me, but it just never matched for me. So I kind of, I wanted to break. I came to Yemen where my family was still living, and somehow I finally applied for a job for uh, as a volunteer. I wanted to go and support them as a volunteer. They gave me a job to work as a project coordinator. I never thought I was good enough, but again, I worked for Oxfam in Yemen as a local staff member for two and a half years, did a lot of work, worked in very remote areas. لم أكن واثقا من نفسي ولكن عندما أعطيت الفرصة أشتغلت في مناطق نائية لمدة سنتين. And then I took a break for about a year and a half because again, you know what I said in the beginning, I wanted to be a mom, I wanted to be a housewife, I never wanted my children to be looked after other people. أخذت إجازة لمدة سنتين وواصلت عملي كحققت حلمي كأم. But then I needed to go back to work for personal reasons and I got a job with the British Embassy in, in Yemen again. And that was my worst, worst ever experience. Most people will say, what's wrong with you? 7.30 to 2.30, you don't have to travel, you have children, you're getting a decent salary, stay at home. Uh, like, just do that. And I said, no, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'm not comfortable. Then I got a job with the Islamic Relief and there's a small story behind that, that I applied for, there were two positions, and then I applied for um, disaster preparedness because that was my experience, but there was another job which was orphans coordinator. So I said to in my right in my cover letter, I said to them, look, I'm applying for both jobs. I understand my experience is this, but I really want the orphans job. Anyway, they call me for the disaster preparedness job. I will go to the interview all prepared. And I give my interview where there are three men sitting and just like interviewing a woman, which is also a very strange experience for me. And uh, they asked me, why do you, I, again in the interview I said to them, I really want the orphan's position. And they said to me, why? <laughs> you know your experience is something else. Why are you, you don't have that experience. I said, what I have is passion for this job. And, and I was honored to get that job and I worked with Islamic Relief in Yemen for six and a half years. I worked as a local and then also worked as an international because after some time they asked me to work as a child welfare manager for different regions, you know, different uh, Asia and Middle East regions. I mean, I worked in the worst areas of Yemen. A lot of Yemenis are here. I can bet you've not been in those areas. They are very remote areas, let alone women. Forget, you know, men would not able be able to go and survive there for more than a few days. 
سواء طبعا من ناحيه جغرافيه وربما امنيه وكثير ربما من الزملاء اليمنيين لم يتلاحظ منهم قد شاهد تلك المناطق. After that, I kind of, um, you know, you know, I was leaving my children. I was getting upset, but I would sometimes I would be very upset that I'm leaving my children for all this. But then I was, you know, I'm talking about child protection at work, and I'm leaving my children with other people. كان هناك تناقض داخلي حيث إنه أعمل في رعاية الأيتام والأطفال وفي نفس الوقت أترك أولادي لرعاية المنزل. But I still believe, you know, every, I, in Islamic Relief Yemen, even in the headquarters, I told them I had the best job because I was looking after supporting my family and I was also um, making, bringing change in the lives of so many people. <laughs> and you know, after five and a, uh, six and a half years, I just felt I wanted I was getting this label of working with children, so I wanted to get more experience. So I moved to another organization called ADRA, which is a very opposite to Islamic Relief, from Islamic faith based to Christian faith based. <laughs> And I wanted to see why is this big hype about Christian organizations. But anyway, I learned a lot. I worked three years with them. I learned a lot. And very honestly, the most I learned was what Muslim, family, what Muslim organizations should be doing for women. Christian organizations are doing that. They're bringing your family values. They're bringing the value of keeping your family together. That was such an amazing, uh, you know, kind of experience for me. I worked with, uh, I was leading, managing Adra's largest USAID-funded project. So when I went to Adra, the knowledge that I know about Adra is the Adventist organization, a Christian organization, that works in the Middle East and Yemen. So when I saw the activities and the activities and the interactions with the women, I was very impressed with the activities of these activities. But anyway, then the war in Yemen came and uh, I did not want to leave Yemen because I thought this is when Yemen needs me. But I had to leave for, for the sake of my children and the psychosocial help because the war was full on. And then at that time I was alone as a single mother with four children. I moved to the UK because I got a job with Human Appeal, again, managing the worldwide orphans programs. Again, Human Appeal is a well-renowned organization, but for me, working in the headquarters was very, very difficult. It just did not click. They, they were talking about different things all the time. رغم شهرة المؤسسات في بريطانيا إلا أن العمل في المركز لم يكن من يعني من الأمور المفضلة لديه. I was actually arguing with my managers that they don't do things right, they don't know the field life. There was a big disconnect. كان هناك تجربة كبيرة بين معرفة المركز بما يدور في البيدان وحدث نوع من يعني اختلاف وجهة نظر. So after two years, one day my manager comes to me and he says. There's a country director's position vacant in Pakistan. Would you like to take it? And yeah. Yes. So I was like, okay, let me think about it. And everybody around me said, don't do it. Your children are there. They're going to schools. Don't move with them. It's not good for them. طبعا اطفالي كانوا يذهبوا الى المدارس في بريطانيا فنصحوني الكثير على عدم مواطنه كبور العمل. I just went home, prayed, and then the next morning I go to my manager and I said, that's it. Yes, I'm taking this job because if Allah is giving me this position, who am I to say no? So there is, a, there is you know, a reason for me to do that. So I went to Pakistan with my four children. بعد صلاة الاستخارة قبلت العمل وتوجهت الى باكستان مع اطفال اربعه. And um, again, it was an amazing experience, very difficult, because um, when I was taken as a country director, um, 
human, for a human appeal, I was the first person to be a female director. And even at that time, Islamic Relief did not have country directors who were females. So it was a big honor for me. And I would go to these meetings in, um, in Pakistan where there's all these men sitting particularly with the Muslim organizations and it was hard and very difficult for me to talk but then I was elected to chair that group as well. So I just want to know from in one of those meetings, Dr. Hani was there, and there were about 20 men in the meeting, and I was the only one. And somebody said, "There's a somebody said there's an odd one out," and Dr. Hani kind of spoke up and he said, "This odd one out is better than ten than the ten of you here," and it really supported. <laughs> But anyway, again, two years in Pakistan, I was again, I received a phone call from the CEO of Human Appeal asking me to go to leave the Iraq office. Which was the largest funding office as well as the most complicated at the time. And again I said no, 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 because my children, Iraq. But then again, I just said fine, if it's coming, there's a reason I went with my four children and I stayed there two years. And then funny enough, after like almost being two years in uh, human appeals, one of my colleagues made a joke and he said, yeah, these people, you know, in Muslim charities, what do they know about interviews? They get these jobs through phone calls. They will never go through an interview, never get into the main mainstream. So I felt bad again. I didn't believe in myself. I said, yeah, maybe they're right because I did not have a decent interview in the last couple of years. I went and then I applied for a job with Concern Worldwide Turkey. And I got the job and I was so surprised to, to actually get the job. Yes, so uh, very quickly, can I go to the slides there? Uh, the slides, yeah? Okay, Karen, next. I need to go to that. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. Can I have the. It's very short. Okay, my question to you is why do we need women in humanitarian work? Can you run a house or a whole household without a woman? Can you run a household without a man? No. Both are important. Both are important. We have to remember no one is better than the other. But at times when there is no male household, women have the capacity to run the household better than men. Many of us would have done it, most of the women here may have done it, looking after children, looking after work, looking after the kitchen and everything. So why are we not there in, in, in the sector, in the field, in the leadership? 
فماذا يفسر قيامنا من هذا القطاع من هذا الميدان؟ I mean this workshop is a non, is a good example of what the Muslim charities are doing. We have men, which I don't have a problem with, but we need to have women in the equal numbers. توازن أو عدم التوازن في هذا المؤتمر أيضا يوصل رسالة لأن لدينا مشكلة. Okay, very quickly, some of the facts. I'm not. Um, Forty percent of the half of a million humanitarian workers are uh, they provide frontline care during emergencies and wars. This is this is from a 2020 um, uh, study. And uh, women are at the forefront of improving health for conflict-affected populations. Women are disappropriately affected by conflict and humanitarian emergencies. Despite the global commitments to improving gender equality, the issue of women in the field and as women leaders is still a problem. And this is because of the embedded, and I'm not talking about our Muslim charities only, it's, it's across the, the, the sector, uh, the discrimination, discrimination against women in organizational, cultural, financial, political, on all levels, it's embedded. Very quickly, what can women bring to our work? Only women can understand the needs of other women and girls. When you go and talk in the field, they are not going to open up to an opposite gender in whatever culture. We're not talking about the Muslim culture, any culture. So they will, beneficiaries will want to talk. You know, I've been to um, distribution points where there are women and they don't have lines and there are men who are distributing. They're just going to stay in the corner. يعني في مراكز التوزيع نجد كثير من النساء يمارس عنصر يضدهن ولا يتسنى لهن الحصول على حصصهن الغذائية بالدرجة. It's very important to have. I'm not saying women should be country director. All women should be lead, you know, in the in in the top. But it is very important to have women as you know in in the senior management because they are there to design. You know, they will be the background in designing programs and to identify the needs of the women. So I have some key messages for different uh, sects, sects, but it's just my observation, nothing from here and there. So believe that no work, let alone humanitarian or field work, can be done without you. It's not easy, but believe why are you in this sector. You are making, you're supporting your family and you're making a difference in the lives of people who have only probably you. Uh, remember, it needs a lot of sacrifice and dedication. All jobs require dedication, but this needs flexibility as well. In your organizations, ask for women in senior levels. 
Be passionate about what you do. A lot of the times I have been there, a lot of the time people think, oh, I am better than the men, or I am better than, or I as a man I am better than the woman. No, our religion doesn't teach us that. We are equal when we are outside the house. When I'm doing my work, there is no difference who I am. Sorry. Just need to. I, I have to finish. So, uh, you know, again, it's a lot more about how things, but uh, be an example. As a woman, be an example for other women leaders. If you're arrogant, if your attitude is not right, you will never get there. And some key messages for men, learn the needs of the work. And don't just fill the role. Believe that women are needed in this work. Women have needs. Accommodate them. Make female friendly environments in the organization. And don't underestimate what women can achieve. I have been in places where they say, okay, you know, she's a woman, she'll get pregnant, so she will take time off. Don't, don't get, get into these kind of discussions. This is nature and this is what women's bodies are supposed to do. And very quickly, last slide, uh, some key messages for organizations. Provide ongoing training on gender mainstreaming, mainstreaming gender needs, conduct gender audits and conduct service on why there is an issue of gender gaps. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I took time, but of course the translation kind of took time. Thank you very much. Sorry.